sense of theme. Except for this video is not about Monstera. <laughs> Hey plant fam! Welcome back to my channel. I don't know why I'm laughing. If you are new here, I'm not always like this. My name is Jacqueline. This is my jungle. Thank you for clicking on this video. I am talking today all about peperomia. So if you aren't new here, you know that we have a love-hate relationship with peperomias. I feel like I'm not the only one either like raise your hand if y'all have an issue with peperomia so hear me out peperomia obtrusifolia was one of my first house plants that i ever really loved because i loved like the thick more like succulent like leaves on it because i got into house plants because i had some succulents and i really enjoyed them and then like it just escalated very quickly from there as you can tell, like I have too many plants, but that is not what this video is about. Today I want to talk about the peperomia that I have come to love and the ones that I think are the easiest for me anyway to take care of. So let me know in the comments below if you agree or disagree with these, which ones are easy for you, which ones you just can't seem to stop killing because... I don't know any plant parent who hasn't murdered a peperomia at least once. So don't even act like this doesn't apply to you. Okay, I see you. So I don't have many here and I'm going to start probably, oh, I should leave my favorite one for last. I love them all equally, but I think we'll start with the peperomia rotundifolia or the peperomia hope it is also commonly referred to so this one is also very like succulenty she's kind of thirsty i need to water her you could see so i feel like she's a little bit easier to care for still on the hunt for like thrip eggs and larvae i haven't been seeing adults so I'm just making sure those little suckers didn't leave any eggs behind, you know? She is just really stunning when she trails. I mean, she does get a little wonky just because I have her facing, like, in towards me so I can see her instead of at the window, which she would probably prefer. And then she would be a little bit more compact like she is up here. But you can see they do get this very subtle, cute little veining in the leaves. I feel like I water this the same way I water pretty much the rest of my house plants. She doesn't require any extra humidity and she's fine. I don't mind her growing a little wonky if anything. I think she just looks cuter that way, especially in her little face pot. I mean, I feel like everybody has one of these from like TJ Maxx and I got this at Marshall's for $4.99, like probably a million years ago. <laughs> so yeah, that is the Peperomia rotunda folia, Peperomia hope. So if you have one of these, let me know, because if not, you should get one. I got this one for pretty cheap at like Woodland, Woodlawn for $12.99. Woodland, I think I got it at, honestly. God, I don't remember. Oh, your hair got messed up. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? There we go. I keep her on the shelf just like this, and I like to look at her. She grows kind of just like reaching around on the shelves and whatnot, and we don't mind. We let her do her thing. I mean, we definitely lose leaves pretty often, <laughs> not going to lie. But otherwise, she's not dead like most of my peperomias. I've had her for a while, so... The next one I have here is a cutting that you would have seen... I showed you guys a couple of David's plants in my last vlog. If you didn't see that, I'll link it for you here. Definitely go catch it. We went plant shopping all the way from Connecticut to Tennessee and back. <laughs> like, it was a lot of plant shopping. And we did some plant chores at his place as well in the beginning. And I showed you some of his plant collection. And um, 
we'll probably be doing like a full-on tour of all of his plants in his space pretty soon as well so stay tuned for that i digress this is a cutting from his peperomia that he took for me like probably a year ago now if not longer than that rooted it up for me gave it to me in a cute little pot he was so proud of himself because he like hadn't really propagated anything on his own before so this plant is sentimental to not only just adorable so this is the peperomia incana also known as the felted peperomia because it's legitimately soft she's got some cute little baby leaves she's leaning so i just had rotated her but i turned her around so that you guys could see how cute she is so every time i water her i rotate her but again some like thicker more succulent like leaves and like a thicker stem and everything and i just feel like this is easier to keep alive it doesn't need the extra humidity that a lot of peperomias prefer will get there so or like need to be watered every three days like girl I don't have time for that who has time for that maybe if you have like four plants okay in your home all the time but cute little kitty pot I don't remember where I got her I think I got her at a nursery somewhere in Connecticut but she's one of my favorites like this combo is just one of my favorites in general she's cute as hell so cute so that is my peperomia incana i don't come across these very often i don't know why so if you can find one get your hands on it i highly recommend it it is super stinking cute with these like little heart-shaped leaves and like they're fuzzy if you like a fuzzy plant you need this these also just like don't require super bright direct light either so you can just keep these on the interior of your house as long as they're getting light like they're gonna be fine you feel me you feel me the next one that i want to show you is probably my favorite i should save the best for last but I keep looking at it and it's really stinking cute so you guys would have seen me pick this one up at Rosedale a long time ago and this is not my first go with this plant I have a really old video on my channel of like the first time that I bought one repotted it it's a really popular video for some reason and it died like not even a month later probably because your girl had no idea at the time that pepperomias were such a pain so I picked up another one and I was like let's see if we can keep it alive and I just like I water it more than I watered the other one and I don't touch the roots I don't think they like to be repotted so she's still in her original dirt like I said I got this at Rosedale for $24.95 which is not a bad price for this at all and um this is the pepperonia pepperonia pepperoni this is the pepperoni plant pepperomia ruby cascade i can't talk for some reason and that's literally just because look at the undersides of these leaves aren't they beautiful they're so stunning so stunning so you've got your green in the front and boom you got your ruby colored in the back so it's really unique beautiful trailing plant to hang in the window because then you just get to see the undersides i love when the undersides of a plant are just as beautiful if not more beautiful than the top because then when you have it hanging you can just appreciate it a little more because sometimes with hanging plants we can't always see the top of the plant that is my peperomia ruby cascade quite possibly one of my favorite peperomias and just one of my favorite plants in my collection period never get tired of her and she's growing she's doing her thing she did have spider mites a couple of times but we killed them bitches the last one that i have that i think is easy to care for when it comes to peperomias is the popular peperomia prostrata aka string of turtles so these are really easy to find these days. If you have a local nursery, they're usually going to carry them at some point in time. I picked these up 
probably also at Rosedale or something along those lines. No, this was the one from 14th Street I got for $12.99. I have a larger one in my greenhouse that I got at Rosedale for like 20 bucks, 25 bucks. So definitely don't be overpaying for these on the internet or anything like that. They're not that hard to come across if you're just patient. Again, same kind of care with these. Like they definitely want their, I, these ones definitely want their top down light or it'll start to get bare up here. And you want to make sure that you're keeping them moist, but not ex it, like insanely wet all the time. These ones are a little bit more delicate and this one as well. These are just a tiny bit more delicate than the other two that I showed you. The leaves are thinner. So you're going to have to water them a little bit more, but just put them in a place where you won't neglect them and it'll be fine. Honestly, I'll just like dump leftover water in here every once in a while. Like, here you go, here's a sip. The good thing about the turtles, at least, is you could tell by the leaves if they're stiff or not. So this one's not thirsty. The leaves are nice and stiff. If I can keep it alive, you can keep it alive. I do have a whole entire video that I'll link for you here on how to not kill your string of plants and this is in there. So this one can definitely be a little bit more challenging, but when it comes to string of plants and peperomias, this is definitely going to be one of the easier for both of those categories, if that makes sense. Hey fam, so I just was thinking that I don't know if I was super clear on how often I water my peperomia, so I treat them the same as I treat pretty much the rest of my houseplants that are in here, and I water them anywhere between every seven to ten days. Obviously, there are other plants that are going to be a little bit more thirsty than that, like my begonias and calatheas and stuff, but for the most part, everything gets watered every seven to ten days, including all of the peperomias that I just showed you, so... They don't really need any special care, in my opinion. They're not, you know, thirsty hoes or anything like that. So, Peperomia in general are going to definitely be, like, a little bit thirstier than other plants, but I don't find that to be an issue, if that makes sense. Like, if you just put it in the right soil, you're good to still only water it the same way that you water the rest of your plants. So I hope that makes sense because I, I was thinking I'll probably get questions in the comments asking me how often I water them and I don't think I was clear on that. So I hope that helped. Okay, let's get back to the video. Yeah, that's my story, you guys. If you're looking for some Easy Care Peperomias, I definitely recommend the Hope and the Incana are going to be really, really easy for you. I would even say that they would be kind of like intermediate plants, maybe not like the first plant you go out and buy, but if you've got a few and you're confident, definitely do not be afraid of these. And then this one might be a little bit more difficult, like I said, but still very easy to keep alive as long as you don't neglect them. Not at all. <laughs> like. The Peperomia caparatas, the more ripply ones that are beautiful, beautiful colors. Don't get me wrong. I have a variegated caparata and a variegated some other type of Peperomia that I forget the name of. I just have them in a propagation container because they're little baby plants and um, I'm pretty sure they would die if I tried to take them out and put them in the normal environment because they want moisture all the time so it's just easier to keep them in a propagation container where it's going to be a little bit more humid and moist in there and they're not drying out. I apologize for the noise outside as well if you can hear that that's super annoying I think they're like trimming the trees or something. So basically that's my cue to leave. I will show you the other ones but I I just don't think those are easy care like in the slightest bit. They're beautiful. I just wouldn't consider them easy care plants unless you have a terrarium or a greenhouse or some sort of setup where you're getting them like that constant moisture that they want. 
I've even had multiple in my greenhouse, mind you, thinking it was fine, all fine and dandy, and then boom, they were dead. So that's my story, fam. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I enjoyed filming it for you. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything from me. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, leave me, I don't know, um, is there a Frankenstein emoji? I forgot to tell you that this shirt is from Boardwalk T-shirts. I will leave the link below for you. I have a discount code for you as well if you're interested. They have a lot of cute cozy stuff. This is a men's large or an extra large. I'm not exactly sure. I unboxed it in another video. I'll link it for you here, but I love it. Super cozy, super cute, and not expensive. Good quality fabric, made in America. I think they're in California. You can't go wrong. So leave me a Frankenstein emoji if there is one. If not, just some leaves, I guess. Let me know. Or just, just let me know. Just be like, hey, I watched the whole thing. It was great. Thanks for posting it. <laughs> there should be stuff in my Etsy by now, the time this video goes up. I've been slacking. I know. I'm sorry. But I'm working on it, okay? It's a lot. There's a lot going on. So if you want to support my channel in any other way, though, there's lots of links down there. Check them out. Go shopping. I make a commission through all of those links down there. Well, most of them anyway. And there's discount codes too. If not, I have a Venmo and a PayPal link. You guys are more than welcome to buy me a cup of coffee or some tea or some seltzer. My Monstera cup. It's toasty in here. It's really hard to film when it's hot out because you like gotta close the windows, gotta turn the fans off, gotta turn the AC off so you're just like dying, slowly melting. So you can donate, do all those things down below. A few of you have already and I really, really appreciate you. You guys helped me out a lot, especially when it came to my cat. So I am going to be doing a video all about pets and plants and pet safe plants. And then I'll give you guys a proper update on how Crash is doing in that one. And yeah, I hope that you enjoyed it. I enjoyed filming it. Definitely go check out Boardwalk t-shirts. They have some really cute, sarcastic stuff. It's not all plant related. And I, I really love it. I'd be buying it even if they weren't sending it to me for free. I love you, fam, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!